Hi everybody, welcome to a new video of one of my latest work. This is called Swell Over the Reef. Now if you uh, enjoy my videos, please like and subscribe. And if you would like to help support me with buying art materials so that I can continue to do these videos, please go to the link in the description. Um, any, any small amount is greatly appreciated. This is a painting that I did quite a long time ago. It's not, it is unfinished because I was never quite happy with it. But there were parts of it that I really liked. I really liked the textures at the bottom. And I thought that would make a great basis for this painting I had in mind, um, which was a, an ocean reef and swell rolling over it. And I thought that would make a really great basis for the reef. And I wanted to do this this painting for my grandson and so I wanted it to be a real beautiful fantasy of, of underwater life on the reef. The texture at the bottom is actually cement. I spatulaed on a, a good uh, soft mixture of cement and I dragged some tools through it and above that is some crackling paste, gold crackling paste and I drizzled some resin over the top of it. So they're the parts of the texture that, that I have kept. Um, for the reef basis. So here I'm just using acrylic paints and I'm creating a the waves and the water, the underwater um, textures in the water and a swell like texture. So I'm using blues and greens and, and white and I'm covering what's underneath and I'm cutting back into that shape at the base to create the, the reef, so I'm, I'm making interesting shapes with, with the cutting in of the brush and so I have an interesting reef shape. The edge of a, edge of a shape is important because that's we, when you first look at something you see the edge of something and if it has an interesting edge it will, dry, it will draw your, the viewer's eye in to the element in your, elements in your painting. So I'm trying to create some nice highlights in the water so as if the, the light is streaming through the ocean down to the ocean floor. I needed a great deal of depth because I knew that what I was going to do on top. So then I started to paint the rocks so I was just dragging, sort of dry brush dragging across the cement and resin and crackling textures at the bottom. Um, we, you know, making it quite warm. I want it to be warm in tone so that that will really, really jump forward and, and create a good sense of depth. And I needed a really strong, strong blue against the reef so that the resin effects that I intended to do would stand out and the fish as well. So I was just cutting back in, making some interesting shapes. I mean, this is a dip ditch, so um, the shapes needed to join and flow across the page, across the, the work. So I'm just cutting back and deepening my tones with various blues. And now I'm applying a crackling paste. This is Viva crackling paste. And I'm just putting it on very thickly. I mean, it's quite a thick texture already underneath. And I wasn't quite sure how it was going to respond sitting on top of cement, but it actually worked out pretty well. It actually made quite a, a very small crazed crackling which was really lovely and it was very thick I was applying it very thickly and then I started to scratch back in to create a texture so I was just using paddle pop stick and wiping wiping off so that I got a sort of a kind of a linear a linear texture going on almost like little waves and then I, I put on a, a thin layer of acrylic paint, so this is quite thin and watery because I was doing a kind of glazing with acrylic paints and so it was a darker colour over the light, lighter colour behind it. And now I'm, I'm dropping on some pure alcohol and it creates those lovely blooming shapes, it's a bit like watercolour. And it, it created a lovely sort of mockly dappling effect. And see the crackling? It was actually already starting to dry, and as it's drying, those little tiny, weeny crazed patterns were appearing, which was lovely. 
So I was work creating a sense of depth by the rocks and the ocean floor is deepest and deeper in tone and as you rise up to the surface of the water it lightens in tone. I even did a bit of flicking of, of white paint across the work and I thought that was a pretty good strong strong background for the things that I had in mind. I needed a really strong contrast behind the techniques that I was going to apply on top with the resin and with some handwork. So I decided I needed it to be not quite so white because I knew I was going to do a flow of resin and if it was too white you wouldn't see that effect as well. So I deepened it with some a bit of yellow and then I dried it a bit and I just kept glazing sort of very thin layers over the top and it was resisting because there was alcohol there underneath and it was resisting a little but I, ne I wanted a deep deepness at, at one side of the painting working across to a, a bit of light on the other I didn't want it to be too even I wanted it to, to be in a regular tone right across the work and so see you get those beautiful blooms and the cra now the um, crackling has dried this is the next day and then I was just dry brushing over the top of that with some beautiful odd orange, cadmium orange. I use these fabulous pigments, uh, language pure pigments and and some yellow and I'm virtually mixing on the surface so sometimes I mix particular colours up but quite often I'll actually mix mix as I go on the surface of the work. And so I'm dragging it over the top and some of it's dropping into the into the little valleys of that texture and some of it's just sitting on top and see this that that purpley color that so I'm creating a really that's a complementary that yellow and, and purple and the orange is quite complementary colors so um, that will create a graying effect at the bottom because it's desaturated the color when you mix two complicated complementaries together you get a desaturated color a gray um, and now as it was kind of drying a little bit, then I would get a, a a damp cloth and rub back. And so it would take the paint off the surface of the texture and leave the paint in the valleys. So you get you it plays up the texture that you have there. And so I was pretty pleased with that. It, it really had a look of coral, had a real coral effect. So I was just making sure that the you know the top parts of these um, outcrops of, of coral were lighter in tone and, and further down at the base they were darker in tone so the sense of light to dark the whole painting there's a sense of light at the top moving down to darkness and that will create depth and perspective so that turned out quite nice I love those shapes I really like the shapes that we created I really love the cement I must say I'd like to do some more cement now this is, um, I'm using art resin, so I've made a wall with uh, cloth tape and that's, I find that the best tape and it's quite, uh, it's quite a strong taste and with tape and it will um, withstand the um, heat gun. Now I've poured a really thick layer of resin, it's quite thick and now I'm applying a resin that's been mixed with angel white it's a, a very stable pigment from Lorez and it creates beautiful webbing and waves. And then I'm pushing back into it with a heat gun and that is dispersing the pigment. The pigment, it's very heavily pigmented. So I've put a lot of, of the white into the resin because I know it's going to be mixing with the resin behind it and it, it will cure. Um, there won't be any problem with curing. And, you know, at times when I thought there was too much of the white, I would just drag it out with a um, paper towel, push it over the edge of the tape. And here now, what I'm applying here is from a can of spray paint, directly from a can of spray paint, and I'm just applying that in little dots, the white. And it disperses a lot, so you have to keep going back and adding again. Now, that orange there is, is not from a spray can. That is pure pigment and I mixed it with a little bit of a lacquer. I, I mixed it with a lacquer that was for gold, uh, gold leafing lacquer and I wanted to see what it would do and it is fabulous. 
So there, there is lacquer in spray paint. So I thought, what if I put lacquer and mix it together with, with just a pure pigment and see what happens when I put it into resin? I was worried that it may not cure. It did create a skin, but um, it cured it cured fine and it, it didn't, um, I didn't have any problems with it at all. And I did it with the, the blue, the blue is actually a spray can colour as well. But the orange is pure pigment mixed with a lacquer. So you can add that to resin, which I was really astonished at the effects. It moved quite a bit, but it kept its colour. It was better than the spray paint because the colour is much stronger. So that was a really good experiment and I just love the shapes that I got with it too. So I was putting white spray paint in the middle of that as well. And see I'm dragging out from those spray paint shapes. See I'm dragging, dragging the shapes out so I could move it. But it, it was like a kind of a skin um, and it really was a bit, I was worried at the time that it was never going to cure but it did. It was fine. So you can put mixed lacquer with pure pigments. And these are pure pigments, and they're not resin pigments, it's actually pure pigment, language, language pigment is what I use. And here I'm actually applying some, uh, these are acrylic diamonds, these are sort of scattered decorations that they have, and I wanted to create a real little bling, some real light coming through. And it, it worked the best where I, I'd put a little bit of blue in the resin in one part, and it actually worked the best there because they actually dropped into the, the colour and and then they create, you could see the shape of the little diamante. Now here, I'm again, I'm using spray paint. So that is spray paint that I've sprayed out into a small container and then I'm just dabbing it on with the panel pop stick. So I sprayed the paint out before I put it, put it on. And here now, when it was all cured, um, it, well, not completely cured, then you just cut the edge because when you take the take the tape off around the edges and I didn't I'm just doing this with one hand so don't worry I didn't cut myself um, I I put the camera around and dip down and did this properly so this is the time to do it where it's still soft like this and you can cut cut the edge off and a little bit of the sand now here now I'm beginning to do all the handwork so I would find a, a nice shape. Sometimes there was a few shapes that I didn't like so I decided to do a fish over the top of it. And so here I wanted to do one of those lovely fan, fish with the fan fans, fanning wings. So there was a, a quite a weird shape that had appeared in the resin there so I decided to do it over the top of it. And so I just would create a white area with white acrylic paint so that meant that it would be easier for me to put colours over the top of it. So where I wanted to put a fish or you know a underwater creature of some sort I would just paint a white area so like a silhouette so then the acrylic paint would stick well to the surface rather than just straight onto the surface of the resin because it, it can sometimes resist. If you do have a lot of, res of resistance of your paints, you can sand the surface, um, but you will have to put another layer of resin over the top. So I'm, I'm intending just to put a, a light wipe of resin over the top of the whole work. In the end, I'm not putting another thick layer because that will then, it will lessen the colours and the whites in the handwork so I don't like putting a thick layer over the top of it in the end just something very thin you can even even just spray it with a, a gloss lacquer you don't need to um, even do another layer of resin um, but I'm just going to wipe some resin when I do some resin I'll just wipe it over the top um, of it just a very 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 thin layer just to make sure that that paint doesn't come off because you actually could scratch that off the surface and if it got knocked up against something it might come off. So here I'm just, I'm, I'm, I had a look at some pictures of, of some un, or underwater fish so I'm sort of kind of basing it loosely on some pictures that I've got. Um, and here I'm putting in a starfish um, because the other day when I was out with my grandson we saw a starfish um, it was hanging onto a rock just like that. 
So I said to him that I'll definitely put that in the painting for him. So that's his little, that's a little starfish. So see, I just put a little bit of white and I'm going to come back and, and work in, work over the top of it. And now I'm just putting a little shadow. So then that a little shadow like that will anchor it to the surface of the rock underneath. So it's the, the illusion of it. It's actually now attached to that rock. It has that sense of being attached. And so now I'm, I'm playing up some of the shapes that appeared from, from those um, little spray paint um, dispersed areas that I did. And I'm just picking up the highlights, so the lightest area on the, t on the ends of those shapes. This is all complete fantasy. I'm, I'm not basing this on anything real. This is a, as a fantasy reef. And I'm just playing up the, the edges of these other shapes and making them look a little bit like jellyfish. And there were two sort of very strange shapes in one of the panels and so I decided to, to do two fish there to cover it up. And I even cut back into or around it because there was, there was a sort of a muddying of, of um, white and colour behind it. So I've actually used some acrylic paint and and paint over the top of it and you won't see it you won't see where I've done that because I've managed to to match the tone that's underneath and so here I'm using that same beautiful orange it's a cadmium orange and I'm creating the, the perspective of the fish I'm just making these fish up they're sort of loosely based on things that I looked at I looked at some uh, pictures of, of reef fish and I mean I've been to the reef so I actually remember the fish that I saw when I was snorkeling and here now see I'm pulling back pulling out with a um, a small cotton bud and I'm pulling the, some of the paint out and creating a sort of a motley highlighted effect and I'm putting lots of little bubbles and swirls around it so I wanted to create a, a really nice sense of movement I didn't want it to look static because it's definitely not static um, in a, on a reef is it's teeming teeming with activity when you when you snorkel in at the um, at the reef I went to the Great Barrier Reef one of the most wonderful and best things I've ever done and here I'm I'm just picking up highlights again, so I'm putting highlights on the top of the fish and I'll put more shadows underneath. So now I've finished and I just wanted to show you the lovely sort of glitter. There's a real glitter about this painting and depth as well. It's very hard to show you in a, in a video but there's, there's a great deal of depth in them. And I was quite pleased with how it ended up. And um, some of those oranges I knocked back with some other colours, but I was pretty pleased with the final result. And uh, I know that my grandson will love it. Thank you so much for watching and uh, keep your eyes out for a new video and uh, like and subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video and like to help support me, there is a link in the description for any any size donation. It's all, all goes to uh, buying some new paints. Um, so I can continue to do these videos. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.